listen, 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 listen. Look. Howdy folks, Reagan and Riley with the GWP Homestead. And Riley, you think it's about time to trap that spooky cow? Uh -huh. All right, here, go play. <laughs> I can keep her attention for about five and a half seconds, but that's pretty good. So yes, it's finally time to trap uh, that spooky cow. He's kind of faded out up there in the distance at the moment, but uh, we say trap, he's got a processing date set for 25 whatever days from now, not quite a month. And uh, we finish our beef in our barn over here. And we just spent uh, a little time cleaning that stall up, getting it ready for him. So if you haven't already, there'll be a link um, up there if you want to watch that video. But, uh, you know, he's going to spend his time in there. And Riley is super excited about trapping that spooky cow. We named this cow Spook because whenever we got him, that very second day, he jumped the fence on us and, uh, you know, spooked darted off and it took us like four hours to get him corralled back up. So that was a lot of fun. Uh, so we've been calling him spook, spooky. Uh, Riley doesn't like cattle. So it's that mean old spooky cow to her. But while he's up there, we're gonna get the uh, water trough in the barn topped off for him. Since it's sunny at the moment and the water hose isn't frozen, gotta strike while the iron's hot and do things when you can. So we'll do that. Uh, he'll come down around supper time. So we'll get video of him, you know, trapping him, walking him in the barn probably. Hopefully it's pretty easy. Didn't take him long to figure out uh, what was going on over here. We were overdue for a feed run, so. Yeah, everybody in here is very excited. I think these birds have thoroughly distributed all the straw set up in here. I was really hoping they would do that because they just love scratching and digging around at stuff. And I mean, those were, there we go, focus. Those were some fairly intact bales of straw this morning. You gonna help? Big help. Reckon that could have been harder. Just walked right in. Come here. I got something to show you. Come here. Come under the fence. Come here. What's the matter? What? What? Hey, what are you scared of? What if I told you the cow was in the barn? You want to see the cow in the barn? Come here. Here, come on the fence. Come on. Let's see. There's a cow. Yep, you see him in there? I can see it. Did we trap that spooky cow? Uh-huh. <laughs> yep, are you happy? Uh-huh. So what are we gonna do with him? I know. Now that we've trapped him, you're the one who's been clamoring that we trapped the spooky cow. Uh -huh. What are we gonna do with him? I know. Well, I mean, you gotta have a plan. Uh -huh. You can't just say we're gonna trap him and then do like move on with our lives. What are we gonna do with him? He's eating straw. He's not supposed to be eating straw. But I'm trying to see. Yeah, I can't pick you and your sister up though. Yep. Mission success? Okay. Do you feel safe walking around the field now? Okay. Here. Mwah. So upset. <laughs> As a dad, I feel bad because I can't help but giggle. She's absolutely terrified of that cow. I mean, you know, breaks my heart. Oh my gosh, my daughter is upset. She's crying. What are we gonna do about it? It's a cow. I think I think we'll be fine. I think as a family we will be able to persist through this. But Riley's happy. Part of life on the farm, you know. He's brought here for a purpose and he is beginning to fulfill it. So what are we doing, Keaton? Putting pine needles in here. Why are we gathering pine needles? Uh, uh, put them with our blueberries. 
for the blueberries? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. So blueberries really like acidic soil, and if you use pine mulch, uh, it'll eventually, you know, over time drop the pH of the soil pretty much to a level that blueberries just love. So uh, every fall when the pine tree here sheds its uh, needles, I guess this is the second time we've done this, uh, since we haven't lived here more than two years, um, we've gathered up some pine needles and we're taking them back there to our blueberry plants. Kids absolutely love it. And of course they love eating blueberries. So when we mulch, leave just a little bit of space around the base of the tree or the bush, whatever, so that we don't get the uh, mulch. We don't want it to choke out the, uh, the stem of the bush. But that way, we have a nice weed barrier, make the soil good for the bushes, which means a good crop, which means I'm happy, which means my kids are happy. And then all we gotta do is keep you happy. But you <laughs> like blueberries too, so. I just didn't eat them this year because we didn't have any. Yeah, Keaton, Keaton Riley pretty much put a wart hurt on that little bush. This is the one we could protect. We had a real late frost this year. And so that bush, we were actually able to cover uh, with a pillowcase and it covered it very nicely. Those bushes weren't sturdy enough, you know, bushy growing up enough to really cover very well. And so they had a few twigs here and there, but for the most part, we'd put a sheet over them and they just fold. This one we could cover with the pillowcase. And it had a pretty good crop, but of course it's it's tiny. I want great big old blueberry bushes. Blueberry's about as big as a baseball. Is that a thing? I don't think so. We're gonna try and make it a thing. Next on the list is teaching the children about simple machines and why the wheelbarrow doesn't work unless you operate the fulcrum. But maybe they'll sleep. Well, the bachelor pad is set up and the spooky cow is contained. Megan's about like almost back to 100%. Maybe by the time you watch this video, she might actually be there, which that's exciting stuff, right? I know some people I'm sure might find it a little weird that we treat this animal almost like anything else. I mean, he is brought here for one purpose and that is, I mean, he's a beef steer. He is meat. And, uh, you know, we interact with them just like we do with these other animals, which, you know, they are farm animals, but it's different. So, um, you know, it's, he's brought here for a purpose. He's serving it for our family. Um, you know, we're not even going to eat this when we're selling it. And, you know, we're going to take that money and put it towards ours next year, which, that, I mean, again, that, that helps our family. It's why, I'm, why we're doing this. Why, you know, we bought land. We want to put it to work for us. It's no different than people who own dairy cattle. I have dairy goats that I'm going to use for their milk and the things their milk can do for me versus having a meat animal, which we do have two meat goats that are essentially pets. Clyde. Trouble, Bonnie. Troublemakers. Yeah, but they do... Really? We couldn't have waited until we left? But they do serve... They're just different. It's different purposes. Everything has a purpose. You know, our chickens are treated like pets a lot of times, but they are laying us eggs and give us companionship. This one hasn't done much for companionship. My last one, a lot of companionship there. Yep. You know, there were times where I just needed out of the house, and I would come down here and brush him while he was locked up because I needed out of the house away from the kids. 
and that was still in the mix of a lot of the lockdowns. But, we're we're thankful that this animal was you know it, it came to our farm from another farm. I mean, it had a good life coming up. We he's from Futural Fut Farms down the road from us in Cadiz, Kentucky, and uh, you know he had a good life there. moved moved to our place. He had a good life here on the farm, and. You know, that's it's why he's here, and we're thankful for the life that he has and what he's going to provide for our family and for the family that's going to, um, you know, use him for his purpose. So, we try to try to respect God's creation to the best we can to to take care of the things that we've been entrusted with here on our little our little piece of earth. If you eat meat, it's the nature of it. Something's got to die so you can eat it. Harsh but true. You know, our kids are growing up knowing where their food comes from, and they do understand it because. When Keaton got mad at a rooster, he looked at his daddy and said, Daddy, I want to eat that rooster, and then got upset because he said, Daddy, I don't know how to kill him. Yep. And he did eat it, so. It, it wasn't a very good rooster, but he did try it. <laughs> you tough old rubbery chicken. <laughs> well, that, that ought to do it for now. Appreciate y'all watching our channel. My name's Reagan. This is Megan. Thanks so much for watching GWP Homestead. See y'all soon. Bye, guys.